Hi guys, this is Austin. I hope you're doing great. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about responsive images and pixel density and how to use the source set and size attribute on the image tag. So let's get started. All right, before we get started, I am working from almost exactly the same source code as the previous video I made on media queries. For those of you who haven't seen the previous video, please feel free to check that out on my channel. In the meantime, I have some basic HTML boilerplate here with a banner at the top here in green, which is this banner div, as well as a content div where we will be placing some images for our experimentation today. Additionally, I have some CSS some basic CSS styles, as well as two, two or three media queries, one for tablet, one for desktop, and this print media queries from uh, the previous lesson. So uh, that's just to get started. That's where we're starting from. Now let's take a look at the syntax. A standard image tag looks like this, where we have a source attribute, where we'll put in uh, images slash, and I'll show you the images I've got here. The we've got some images, some of various sizes here. This is one x is 1500 pixels by a thousand. This two x is twice that, and we have these large, medium and small. This is like a cropped version. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw the 1x in here, space 1x.jpg, and we'll send in some its space, and we'll see what this looks like. All right, so that's what we start with. Now, the source set attribute allows the browser to choose and request the appropriate image based on the viewport size and device capabilities. And it looks like this. So what we'll do is we'll do src set equals, and we'll provide it space 1x.jpg, and we'll put 1x comma images slash space 2x.jpg 2x now the example we have here displays the space 1x jpeg here by default in the case that the browser doesn't support the source set attribute it just falls back to the standard source attribute the first entry in the source set syntax calls the space 1x JPEG image. And it has this 1x after this. This is called the pixel density descriptor, which it tells us which image to load based off of the pixel ratio of the device that is loading the page. Now, this is handy because we want all of our images to look great on both high DPI uh, retina displays on Mac, as well as lower quality displays. So loading a high DPI image on a low DPI screen really makes for a slower loading time and it increases the data costs if it's on a mobile device, if it doesn't need it, and it's all around just the most provides the most performant end user experience. So it's nice to be able to tell the browser which assets to request from the server before it's rendered. So what does this actually look like? So in our network tab on Chrome, we can see that, let's load this page. And we can see up here Let's set this, let's set this to 
just regular responsive. All right. So as you can see, we can see our breakpoints here. Let's load this page and look at our console. So this is our network. As you can see, this image here, uh, it loaded the 1x image, and it's 105 kilobytes. This screen that I'm using is 1x. It is a non-retina screen. And we can check this out by going to the console and typing in the window device pixel ratio. And we can see down here it's 1. Now if we want to simulate a high DPI screen or a iPad or something with uh, device pixels of 2x or 3x, we can go up here and select 2. Now what happens is the screen, the browser requests the larger image, which we could see here. It loaded the the 310 kilobyte high resolution photo for this for this image because the browser is running in uh, with a device pixel ratio of two. So now that we've requested the specific images based off of the device pixel ratio, what if we wanted to request a completely different set of images or a different image based on the viewport size? There is no reason to load a large photo on a mobile phone. So perhaps we would want to load a small, maybe cropped version instead for just better layout. This is where the source set W unit comes in. and what does this look like? The W enables the browser to choose which image to request based on the viewport size. And the value before the W is similar to a media query breakpoint in that it, that given the viewport width in pixels, the browser will request the corresponding image asset. So what does this, that, that you may say, great Austin, that sounds great, but what does this look like and why would we use this? So I'm going to duplicate this line here. I'm going to comment this out. Now instead of the 1x, we're going to put 500w and 1000w in here. And as I said, the W unit tells the browser the dimensions of the image file it needs and allows it to request the appropriate image for that device. So if we load this, okay, so we can see that our screen is more than a thousand pixels wide. Right, but if we, what's interesting here is if we go to a smaller, it's going, it's already loaded this image, so it's not going to re request the smaller image, image because that'd be a waste of bandwidth. So we just hit our small, okay, this is our small um, image, let's say, at less than 500 pixels. Notice it still has this large 310 kilobyte file here. But if I refresh this, it loads the 1x version. But watch this. If I resize the viewport here to greater than 500 pixels, it just made another, it's making new calls here. So let's, let me show this to you again. All right. Okay. So it just loaded the 1x. So if I scroll all the way down to the bottom here and I resize this, it's now doing calls to the 2x and pulls that in. So it provides a better... Uh, the larger image asset to go with the 
view correct viewport. If the image we're using isn't displayed at 100% width of the viewport, let's say we didn't want it to go all the way across here, this viewport, um, we have to use another attribute called the sizes attribute. And so, some code here that I've prepared. All right. Cool. All right, as you can see here, we have this source set attribute. And it calls the space small 600W. The medium at 1500W and large at 3000. These are completely arbitrary widths in terms of um, in terms of file size. Arguably, 3000 pixels is a file that is way too big to be loading into a browser. It's, it's way too big, but it's just for an example here. So the sizes attribute here uh, is very, again, is very similar to a media query. Um, and it tells the browser the viewport sizes at which the various images will be displayed. So this information uh, could be, you may think it could be provided via CSS, via a media query. But unfortunately, CSS is parsed after the HTML is requested. So when you request the HTML, I mean, it's kind of a chicken and egg problem. You have to know the size of the viewport and request the specific image before you can render it on the screen. So we do something like this. It's very similar to a media query in that um, we have a minimum width at which the viewport has to be and then executes what what image basically is going to be loaded. So in this case, if I say this, we can, our screen, our viewport is 563 pixels wide. And it loaded, because it's less than 600, it's going to load the small automatically. But if I load, oh, screen is greater than 600. So now we have the um, this media query right here. So between 768 and, and 1023, it's going to basically set the viewport width to 1500 pixels and therefore load the medium image, which it has here. Now, if I go all the way up to here, greater than 1024, it's going to load the large, just because anything greater than that is outside of this media query it's just going to default to the 3000 pixel photo. The sizes attribute should correspond to the dimensions of the media query in the CSS. So if we look at the CSS, I have media queries. Oh, I have media queries here at 768 and 1024. Okay, guys. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a good overview of the source set and sizes attributes. I really think that front-end developers should use this more. It really provides a much better... A okay, guys, that's it for this episode. Okay, guys, that's it for this episode. I hope you really enjoyed it. I think the source set and the sizes attribute is really important for making performant 
uh, quality experiences in the browser, and I think more people need to be using that. And so please start using this, start experimenting with it. I'd love to see what you do with it. Okay, guys, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a very general overview of source set and sizes attribute. I really think that it's important to start implementing these on your front end to provide just a better experience for the visitors that come to your sites. The code for this can be found on my GitHub. I'll be sure to put a link to the source code and sample site in the description below. If you like this video and found it helpful, be sure to hit the thumbs up below and subscribe. Until next time, always be kind and always be learning. Cheers. Cheers.